for seven years where we will be celebrating while the world for seven years is tribulating. That's uh, not actually the way the <laughs> text renders it necessarily, but that's what will take place. The Bible is very clear that not only does the rapture take place before the seven-year tribulation, but it has to. One of the reasons for this is because the purpose of the seven-year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. Uh, the whole house of Israel, we are told, will be saved at the uh, end of the seven-year tribulation. Well, be that as it may, one of the uh, reasons we do this is because we believe that today's headlines are like pieces of the puzzle that all come together and fit together in this prophetic picture that we have in the scriptures. Last week, we looked at a couple of these prophetic puzzle pieces, and today I'd like to look at a couple more. Last week, we looked at the ever-increasing global threat to divide Jerusalem. Uh, all eyes are now on Jerusalem. But uh, the prophet Zechariah describes an oracle how that all the nations will be intoxicated with this tiny little city on planet Earth, and it is Jerusalem, and that they will try to move the borders and divide this city and make it a separate state, if you will, and this is what now the world is focused on doing, is creating a so-called, quote-unquote, Palestinian state, living side by side in peace and security. And so this is exactly as the prophet Zechariah said it would be. Another piece of the puzzle that is coming together is that Ehud Almert, easy for me to say, is resigning. He will be stepping down and Israel will have a new prime minister. Some believe this will be Benjamin Netanyahu again. Uh, and to that we say, yay. Uh, now, interesting, we will also have a new president in the United States of America at the end of this year. So these are all pieces of the puzzle that are coming together. Well, I'd like to look at another one. Today, this is what I'll call prophetic puzzle piece number three. It is another attempt. This isn't the only attempt. It's a, another attempt to wipe Israel off the map. I'd like to draw your attention to an obscure psalm. It's a, a prophetic psalm, maybe one that you've not heard of before. Uh, it's found in the 83rd psalm. And I just want to draw your attention to the first four verses, and you're welcome to turn there if you'd like. I'd like to read it for you out of the NIV, Psalm 83, verses 1 through 4. Now, as I read these verses, this is going to read like the headlines. <laughs> this is going to read like the news. The psalmist is crying out to God and says, O oh God, do not keep silent. Be not quiet. O oh God, be not still. See how your enemies are asleep, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Well, it doesn't really take a rocket scientist, especially for those of us who study Bible prophecy and who follow these prophecies, that we have a, an Iranian who is doing just that, cunning, conspiring to eliminate, to exterminate, to terminate Israel so that she is a nation no more. You know, this isn't just new news. This is from about 2005. In fact, this Herald Tribune, International Herald Tribune article, uh, dates back to October 27, 2005, almost three years ago. Wipe Israel off the map, Iranian says. New leader revives an old rhetorical tack. 
Iran's conservative new president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, said Wednesday that Israel must be wiped off the map and that attacks by Palestinians would destroy it, the ISNA press agency reported. Ahmadinejad was speaking to an audience of about 4,000 students at a program called The World Without Zionism in preparation for an annual anti-Israel demonstration on the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, you know, I wonder sometimes, does Mahmoud Ahmadinejad have a Bible? Uh, does he uh, turn to Psalms 83 and say, that's me. <laughs> I, we need to wipe Israel off the map so that she is a nation no more. I mean, it's just, it's canny to me how it is that, you know, the Bible says so many generations before that in the last days before the return of the Lord, there will be those nations who will conspire to eliminate Israel, God's chosen people. Uh, it's interesting to me that all of these pieces of the puzzle are coming together exactly as God said they would. And everything is going perfectly according to plan. Well, the prophetic puzzle piece number four is even more interesting. It's an increasing rumors of war. Jesus was asked by his disciples, the Gospels record his answer in Matthew 24, verses 6 through 7. He was asked, what would be the signs of your return and the end of the age? And so he sort of, Jesus sort of grocery listed, if I can say it that way, a number of things that would take place in the end right before he came back. And one of them was, recorded in verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What's Jesus saying here? He's saying that right before my return, there will be nations that will rise up against nations. There will be wars, and there are a number of wars taking place currently, not the least of which, of course, is the war on terror. But, uh, and some believe there are some 100 wars taking place currently on planet Earth as we speak. But even more so, he takes it a step further and says, not only will there be wars, but there will be rumors of wars as well. In other words, there will be rumors that there will be a war, there will be nations, leaders who will be threatening war, threatening retaliation if there is an attack, so there will be these rumors of war. Again, just last year, this is not new. This has been the last couple, three years. It has been increasing in its intensity. But this UPI article had the headline reading, Rumors of War Against Iran Swirl. The firm denial by Israel of a report in the London Sunday Times that its air force was training for a strike against Iran's nuclear facilities was, a predictable, was as predictable as it is hollow. There is no doubt that Israel's fighter bombers have been training for a long-distance mission. The drumbeats of war are beginning to sound from several directions. In other words, as Jesus said in answering the disciples, there will be wars, there will be rumors of wars, and this will be a sign as well as the many other signs all collectively in concert together that will be like pieces of the puzzle that will fit together and be for you an indication that your redemption draweth nigh. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, one that brings me much hope, is found in Luke 21, 28, when Jesus himself says that when you see these things begin to come to pass, the threat to divide Jerusalem, the attack on Jerusalem to wipe Israel off the map, the wars and the rumors of wars and the hosts of other prophecies with them. When you see these puzzle pieces come together, when you see these things begin to come to pass, then Jesus said, look up and lift up your head and know your redemption draweth nigh. 
Are you ready? 